let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. We'll look at one verse. Verse 27. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. The title of the message is Precious Body, Precious Body. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. The Bible says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Brother Bogey, can you please pray for the message? Mighty God, I come and pray in Jesus' name, Lord. It's uh, so good to be saved. Thank you for salvation. I pray, Lord, that you'd uh, uh, convict and prick our hearts to uh, uh, hear the message that you brought before us today, Lord. Please uh, uh, be with the pastor. Uh, and I pray, Lord, that you be with uh, the uh, online uh, people online, Lord. If somebody's not saved or, or somebody's not walking right, Lord, you please uh, help us to uh, walk abiding and abiding the word and not contrary to it. Please bless us and your presence and fill this place with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Precious body. When you think about your own body, it is precious to you. And if it's not precious to you, you're lying to yourself. Everybody wants what's best for their own body. And your body consists of many members. You, know, you have your hands, you have your fingers, you have your nails, you, know, you have your face, you have your legs, you, know, you have your arms, you have your body, and you have internal organs, everything. So body is something that you take care of or something that you think is very important to you. And the fact that some people abuse their body, it shows that body can be you know, taken lightly, and body can be destroyed as well. Then as a human being, you can either take care of your body or you could destroy your body. When you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are now in the body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ, one body, composed of many, many members. Then, if you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you and I are part of body. Then I could be a feet, you know, and she could be an arm, and, you know, she could be the hand, and he could be the leg. So everyone is part of, you know, particular members of the body. Then you have to realize that, you know, number one thing, in order to have precious body and consider precious body, you have to realize that you are in the body of Christ. Many people don't know that you are in the body of Christ if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you know that your finger's hurting, you're gonna do something about it. Yes. You know, it's, it's kind of like a, you know, how should I say? It's, sometimes it becomes very cliche, but if your hand is hurting, you're not going to just leave it alone. You're going to take care of it. Right. If you realize that we are all in the body of Christ, then you're going to consider every member of the body just like your own body, hey, just like your hand. Yeah. For example, if that young man is hurting, then you probably want to do something about it because that's part of your body. You know, same body in Christ. You know, Christ is the head of the church, Amen. right? Yes. And if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, and as a church, you are in the same body. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 12, you know, the same chapter. The Bible says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized, into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. And you can see, if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, spiritually you're baptized into Christ. And we're not talking about water baptism here. Yeah. Do you see any water here? No. And a lot of times people, you know, 
we call them water dogs, right? Okay. You know, they're like, okay. So you have to be baptized, water baptized, in order to be in body of Christ. It's, it's spiritual baptism. Nowhere here it says that you have to, you know, be dunked in the water in order to be in the body of Christ. Right. No, you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are in his body. Simple as that. Yes. Amen. I think even a five-year-old could understand that. Right? If I trust Jesus Christ, you know, I'm in the body of Christ. Yes. I don't need water baptism. Right. It's always funny. People say you need to be baptized, water baptized, right? You know, to be saved. And a lot of people, a lot of religions say those things. What if you never have opportunity to get baptized yeah. in the water? Does that mean that I can't get saved? You know, I'm in the middle of desert. There's no water around me for thousands of miles, right? Yeah. Or do I have to like dig a hole like 100 feet deep, you know, maybe more, so that water could just come out? Yeah. To be, no, no. I mean, that's symbolic, right? You're obedient. You're Amen. obeying Jesus Christ. It's your testimony. You know, you're baptized with Christ. You know, you're dead with Christ and you're risen again Amen. in the new spirit. Then, as we can see, that through spiritual baptism, you're in the body of Christ. Then, we're all, just remember again, you know, point number one is that you are part of the body of Christ when you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then, when you look at each other, of course, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. It's all, also, everyone has their particular in a part in the body of Christ. Let's go to verse 15. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15, If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Can you imagine? If your finger tells you, you know what? I don't want to be part of you anymore, right? So do you consider your finger not part of your body? Of course not. Verse 16, and if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? You know, sometimes you might ask as a Christian, you know what, at church, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm a toenail. You know? Like nothing's going on. I feel like I don't have, I feel like I'm like nothing. However, you have to remember, every member of the body of Christ is precious. And it's precious, yes. not to you only, it's precious to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then you have to consider that everyone that you see here is precious. Sometimes you and I lose track of it. That because, you know, True. that sister, I don't like her, I don't like that brother. You know, you got to remember, we're here for the truth Amen. and the word of God. Yes. We're not here for being a club or anything. That's right. right. Say if we had a tennis club, everybody has something in common. Yeah. So I mean, you, you get along, right? I mean, there's a book club. If you like to read and, you know, maybe certain periods of, you know, literature. Or if, you, if you're, you know, some other type of clubs, you know, animal club, you're cat lovers, dog lovers, you know, yeah. reptile lovers, or whatever it may be, you have something in common. And a lot of times, you know, you use that commonality. When you're at a church, you're going to meet very, very different characteristics. Yes. You're going to meet very, many, many, many different characters in general. And they're not going to really align with your thoughts many times. Right. right? Because everyone has a different background coming to a Bible-believing church. But you have to remember that if you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior... You are in the same body. Yes. Then each member in this congregation who's listening or everywhere, you know, everybody's precious. Amen. Then you have to consider each person precious. Amen. The reason you don't really care about your brothers and sisters in Christ is that you don't know that they're part of the one body. You guys are connected. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, just because... You don't want to see or you don't care about your foot on a daily basis 
doesn't mean that you don't care about it. What if you get an ankle sprain, right? your foot sprain? Right? You're really going to take care of it because it's precious to you. And just because, you know, say your fingernails is something that you think is dirty, you know, and it does, it's not worth much, but imagine if you don't have fingernails. I don't know. It's got to be painful. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you don't have a part of finger, you know, it's going to be harder to do yes. and harder to live everyday life. Then you have to understand that, okay, I trust that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I'm in the body of Christ, not just me only. Every Christian is in the body of Christ. And the Bible says, you know, as we read in verse 16, verse 15, you can't say because I'm not a particular member that I want to be. You can't say, you know, I'm not part of the body. You know, there's always glamorous parts of the body, you would say, right? Mostly body parts or members that you could see. You know, your eyes, right? Maybe your nose, you know, maybe your ears, right? Maybe your face, you know, some things like that. However, if you don't have other parts that's connected to those organs, what's going to happen? You can't survive. Yeah. You'll be dead. Then, if I were to tell you that if I say, you know, kidney, right? If I could live without kidney and kidney is not that important, what's going to happen? You know, I'm going to be hurt and I could very well die. As a Christian, if you don't consider each member's precious, right, like your own body, then part of you will be dying. Part of you will be neglected. Part of you will become stale. Part of you will become stiff. Part of you will not be all right. The reason why many Christians are not all right is because they don't treat the body like you should. If you can't treat you know, body of Christ in a precious, wonderful matter, I mean, how are you going to treat your own body? Right? You treat your own body as if you're treating the body of Christ. You treat your body of Christ as if you're treating your own body. You have to understand that each person in this you know, body of Christ has a particular job. Verse 17, the Bible says, If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Then point number two, you know, is that each member, so each one of you, have a particular job in the body of Christ. Always remember, you are not nothing, right? I mean, you are nothing only saved by grace of God. Amen. So always have that in your heart. Your heart set always should be, you know, I am nothing. I'm just saved by grace of God. Amen. However, don't think that you have no role in the body of Christ. Don't think that you don't have any role in the ministry of Christ. Everyone has a role. Everyone has a particular job as a member of the body of Christ. Then you are a member of the body of Christ, then you have to understand that I have, a, I have my own role and responsibility in this body. What is the role of your tongue, right? You know, taste, use your tongue to speak, right? What if you don't use it? You become mute, right? You become dumb, right? then you have to understand that every part, every member of body in Christ has a job to do. Then if you've been a lazy Christian, then you have neglected the body of Christ. That's true. If you've been a neglecting Christian, then you're like a person, you know, when it's time for you to, say, take care of your body because it's ailing, but well, you just neglect it. If you know that you have issues in your body, then you're going to probably do something about it because one day, you know, it's kind of, it could kill you. I mean, I had a coworker, smoked all the time, but 
you know, very healthy guy in appearance, you know, carrying like heavy, heavy, you know, things, like no problem. Working, you know, testing, and then worn each arm has like a 35 pound or 50 pound, even 60 pounders in each arms. I mean, it's still pretty young in his 50s. But what do you know? He never went to the doctors or gotten any physicals. You know, he ignored his signs in the body. So health is God, I mind you. You know, if, you know at a work, if you ever, if those who have job, there are certain folks who work the whole eight hours, literally. You know, only time they take break is a little bit of bathroom, and you don't even abuse that time, right? You know, because some people go to the bathroom, stay there for, you know, as long as they want, read a whole, you know, book and come out, right? No, he just goes there, take care of business, come back, and, you know, work and work and work. Exemplary worker. However, one day, this guy was spending more time in the bathroom. I mean, he was coughing blood in the bathroom. So he had to go check himself out. What do you know? He has stage four cancer, terminal cancer. Within three weeks, he passed away, just like that. Person you thought was very healthy, person you thought, you know, could live as long as, you know, they wanted to. But just like that, he was gone. A lot of times, when you don't do your job in the body of Christ, you are killing some parts of the body. You're killing your own self, literally. That's why you have to check, constantly check. Am I doing my job, right? If lungs not doing its job, what's going to happen? It's going to be hard to breathe, right? If the heart doesn't work, what's going to happen? You're just going to die, right? If the eye's not performing well, what's going to happen? You can't see. If hearing isn't working, what's going to happen? You can't hear, right? If tongue doesn't work, what's going to happen? You, know, you can't taste things. Then you have to understand that I have a very, very important role in the body of Christ. And whatever it is, whatever it may be, it is very important. If your job is to just attend church and grow in the word of God, if that's your job right now, then you gotta do it with your best ability. Yes. If your job is to clean the toilet, do it with your best ability. Yes. If your job is to vacuum, if your job is out there, preach the word of God. If your job is to be a good husband and good wife, exemplary children, you have to do it. Amen. That's your job and that's your role. The reason that you don't do your best is why? Because you're only following your flesh and because you're selfish. Yeah. Simple as that, yeah. right? If your body, okay, so people who love junk food, right? And I like junk food too. I mean, but your body is saying no. You know, your body is telling you, stop feeding me this junk food, right? Your stomach is telling you. Your face is telling you because it's bloated, right? Yeah. You know, it's bigger than before. You know, you're eating junk food and you fell asleep, right? And you're like, your body's telling you don't do it and don't do it. However, because you're so selfish, you know, you're selfish. So you only want what's best for you. So you neglect your parts of the body. And even though your body is giving you warnings and you just do it, then what happens? First of all, in real physical sense, you're hurting your own self. You're becoming weaker physically. You're getting more sick. You're going to have more illness. And spiritually, what happens? You become a stumbling block. You become a stumbling block to the ministry and other members in the body. You do not want to be that stumbling block in the ministry. right? You do not want to. You want to be an admonishing member, you want to be that encouraging member, you want to be that healthy member. Amen. You don't want to be someone, you know, because my tongue doesn't want to do its job, my mouth doesn't want to do its job, so I can't eat, you know. Making other members missing nutrients in your body, right? Imagine yeah. if you can't open your mouth, what's going to happen? I mean, some people probably had to go through that. If you ever, you know, broke your jaw, I'm pretty sure it's hard to eat. You probably only could do liquid diet, right? Yes. What if you can't even open your mouth for a day or two? 
because you know you have some ailments in your in your face and jaws, your teeth, your mouth, your tongue. What's going to happen? Your whole body becomes very weak. Yes. Very weak. That's why some, you know, some people, they're just weak. They're very weak as a Christian. Because you're not taking care of your body. You're not, you're, you don't realize that I have a particular job in the body of Christ, but I don't do it. Right? If, you're, if you have any right, seniority over anybody here, as far as you know, after you got saved, you, know, you should at least you know, have grown a little bit. So you could be a little bit of a good example to others. If you've been saved for 10, 15 years, and you're still at the same place, imagine if, when I was little, my hand wasn't this big, right? My hand was probably size of, you know, Jade or something, right? What if other parts of my body grew, but my hand never grew, you know? Imagine my hand was like, like this size, and then my other hand was like this size. Right? Same thing with your feet, right? Yes. I mean, your size is like what? You know, girls, like one feet is size six, and other feet is size three. I don't know, it, it's, it looks weird, and it's going to be hard. Imagine if you have a you know, size six and size three shoes and you're walking. It's not going to be comfortable, and it's not going to be the same. But that's what's happening to you. Right? You are not growing like you should. You're not maturing like you should as a Christian because you do not take care of your part as a member of the body of Christ. And don't tell me that I don't know what to do. You know? Who says always, like, I don't know what to do? Babies, right? They don't know what to do. That's why, you know, you feed them, you instruct them, you try to lead them in the right way, you know, give them the right nutrients and stuff. You can't be, you know, someone who's been saved. I mean, obviously, the majority of the Christians are at this day and age. But you shouldn't be someone, you know, who's always like a little baby, you know, making tantrums, just like a kid at a, you know, department store. You know, mommy, you don't give me this. You know, I'm going to just scream and scream. I think that's one of the worst sights to see. If you're ever at a market, anywhere, when this young kid or young kid, boy or girl, just starts screaming, like, out of their lung, you know, like, top of their lung, they're like, give me this, give me that, you know. And then just sitting down and just crying. And once they get their way, they start, I don't know what happened, right? They just smile. It's like that slight devilish smile, you know? I got my way. That's what you do, you know? When you don't grow and you don't do your job as a member of the body of Christ, you become that little baby, right? You're expecting someone to give your own way. You're expecting someone to follow your own desires. But however, something different about physical body and spiritual body, right? The Lord's going to keep it healthy. So if you become a stumbling block, the Lord has to take care of you. Physical body is up to you, literally. I mean, spiritual too, but physical body, you know, even if you don't do anything, who's going to say anything? Right? You're just destroying your own body. But however, once you affect the body of Christ, the Lord has to do something. Okay, you're not going to do your job. You know, I have to make sure that it's not going to hurt other body of Christ. It's, I'm not, I got to make sure, right? You know, if you're not going to do your job as a ring finger, man, you know, I'm going to make you do the job as a ring finger. You know? But if you continue to reject and neglect, you know, then I have to make sure you do it. That's where, what happens if babies don't follow their mom and dad's instruction? You bring out the rod. 
and give them the right love that they deserve. Yes. Then Lord will have to bring that to you as well. Amen. And if you do realize that now, right, you're in body of Christ and you do have particular job as a member of body of Christ, then you have to understand that there aren't same jobs, right? Everybody has like different roles. Then you got to get rid of that pride, jealousy, and envy in the yes. body of Christ, right? Can you imagine if your right hand is jealous of your left hand? I mean, do you ever look at yourself in the mirror and go, Man, I could see that my left hand is really jealous of my right hand, you know? Or like, my right eye is really jealous of my left eye. You, know? you, don't, you don't say that. Yeah. You consider everything very precious to you because each has their role, own roles, right? Yeah. Then, don't be jealous of other people's roles. Just mind your own business and just do best at wherever you are. Amen. Think about it. If everybody wants to be a pastor, what's going to happen? Yeah. Right? No, we have no members. Right? If everybody wants to do certain things, right? Everybody wants to teach. Right? Just everybody wants to teach. Then there are no students. Right? Yeah. If, I mean, if everybody just wants to, you know, take out the trash, but they don't want to ever get near, you know, toilet, then what's going to happen? I mean, it's going to be a very nasty and dirty situation. You have your own roles. You know, as you're faithful, the Lord gives you more responsibility. I mean, that's just from experience, right? Don't think that you suddenly have a, this great super knowledge. I have more knowledge than any, you know, person before me, whether it's Dr. Ruckman or anybody else, you know, man, I have more revelation, I have more scholarly, you know, aptitude. Or even they're like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty close to him. You try to stay a little bit humble, right? But the rest of the people, man, you know, I'm still better than them, right? With that kind of attitude, and you go say, oh, when's pastor's going to tell me to start teach, you know? Man, I've been waiting. I've been at our church for about four weeks, you know? I need to teach. I taught at other previous church. You know, I was a song leader at other previous church. You know, if you're a girl, you know, I led the girls at the previous other church. You know, I work, you know, I'm like a VP, director level, or, you know, senior level. You know, in the family, you know, they esteem me, esteem me like really high, right? They're like, okay. Okay, when are they going to call me? You know, if pastor is not going to talk to me, you know, maybe, you know, you know, my brother, you know, or maybe Caleb will go and you know, talk to you. Okay, you know, we want you to teach, you know. Okay, there you, and your attitude is like, yeah, it's all about time, you know, right? <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's, that's my role. You know, that's what fits me. Right? No, your role is where you are. Amen. I mean, exactly where you are. Amen. I mean, wherever you are, you have to do your best. Yes. That's it. The way you treat your face. Because I could see that, if not all, almost everybody wash their face today. Right? You know, because you want to look clean. You want to be presentable. Right? Just like that. You know, just do whatever part that you have in the ministry to your best. Like, you know, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Amen. Just do it like yes, you are doing it unto the Lord. Then coming to church is your role right now and to learn, then do it your best. Amen. How yes. to do that best? You know, by attending whenever church doors are open, yes. right? And if you are teaching, then do your best. You know, you prepare like you should, Amen. right? You shouldn't be preparing like 10 minutes before. You know, you shouldn't be, you know, using the old notes that you used like 20 years ago or 10 years ago or five years ago, two years ago, you know, at the lake house. Oh, yeah, I used this. You know, I'm going to use it again, you know. And you give no thoughts to it. Like you don't pray at all, 
and then you just try to wing it, swing it by, you know, God's not going to bless it. It's like this. Everybody, now you need to brush your teeth well, right? Yes. Ten seconds will not do. Right. I'll tell you that, right? Ten seconds of brushing your teeth is not going to keep your teeth healthy. How, you know, technically you're perfect. You know, you got to put some time in it, right? I mean, what's, the, what's like the right time? I don't know, two minutes? One minute minimum? You know, as you're growing up, you know, your parents will say, you know, brush your teeth for like at least three minutes, you know, right? Then you have to make sure that you put in time and do your best. And as you consider each member of the body of Christ precious, and you know that you have a particular role in the body of Christ, you really have to start giving your best from now on. Because you and I could honestly say, and many times we have to admit and we have to confess that we haven't done our best yes. as a member of the body of Christ. Again, I'm telling you from experience. There are days, you know, when I was teaching and preaching, you know, if I didn't give it my all, Lord never blesses it. And sometimes you think that you did good, but in the sight of the Lord, you're like, you know what? You neglected your duty as, you know, body of Christ. Then whatever role that you have, just remember that, you know what? My job is different from that brother and that sister, but it is as important as anybody's. Then I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to consider it, and I'm going to do it as its most important job to me. Amen. You know, that's why we always give this example, because many people don't want to do it, right? Cleaning up the toilet, right? Yes. You know, and especially in a public setting, you know, where many people use it, and at the end of the day, like, you have to clean it. And some people, if you are assigned that job, Maybe for whatever reason, you're like, yeah, man, I mean, that pastor must hate me, you know? And that sister, you know, Mrs. Might, must hate me, you know? Because I, I, mean, I want to like wipe the tables, you know, maybe do the chairs, I don't know, maybe vacuum. Man, but why do I always get the toilet? You know? I've been doing this for the past six months, or maybe a year, or maybe two years. I'm like, man. I hate it. You know? So you give, you know, half-hearted effort all the time. You know? There's always, I mean, I'm not, I mean, where would you want to do your business, right? In a clean setting or a dirty setting, you know? I'm pretty sure that all of you want to be in a clean bathroom. Yes. Then when you think about it, that's one of the most important jobs in any ministry or any building, or any work site, then you have to do it as a mindset and with the attitude, like, you know what? This is the most important job for me that I can do in this body of Christ and for the Lord. Don't always think that, you know, I have to do it for her, do it for me. Always number one thing is what? You're doing it for the Lord. Right? When you're doing it for the Lord, whether it's cleaning up some place, you know, whether it's teaching, preaching, doing something, or sharing the gospel, man, you're going to be different. Yes. You're going to think of it as like the most precious time. If Lord was watching me, and you know, my role is to say, you know, mop the floors, I'm going to do a, as good a job as I can, right? No. What is a good way to mop the floor? Well, you probably want to bring in some you know, detergents or soap, you know, get rid of all the dirt, and then you wash it, and then you mop it again, you know, let it dry. You know, once in a while, you wax it so that you'll be shiny, you know, you'll be presentable. If Lord Jesus Christ directly told you to do it, 
man, you're going to do it really, really well, right? But why is it that when you know that Lord wants you to do your best and do it as if you're doing it for the Lord, you know it. Why don't you do it, right? Why do you not do it? Because you always are looking for your own profit. Let's turn our Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Then what kind of attitude should you have as a member of the body of Christ? Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Again, if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a member of the body of Christ. And you each have a particular role. And don't be jealous that if you don't have different roles, do your best with the same roles or the role that you currently have in the body of Christ. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. The Bible says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Isn't it so true in the body of Christ? When you do something, you want some recognition. You want that vain glory. You want someone to say something to you. I mean, that's what your flesh wants. Do you do it to receive glory or do you do it to please the Lord? It's always the same question, right? Do you do it so that other people could see or do you do it to please the Lord? Do you do it so that, you know, someone will talk good about you or someone will talk about you and lift you up? Or do you do it just to please the Lord? I mean, you always have to ask that question. Continuing, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Lowliness of mind. Always, you got to have humble heart whenever you're doing. You should be thankful that I am in the body of Christ. Amen. You should be thankful that I could do at least something for the Lord. Yes. Amen. And... That's in the ministry, you're doing something for the Lord. And that's at home, you're doing something for the Lord. I mean, Christ is the head of the body, Amen. right? Yes. The fact that you're saved and then you're a child, you're a mother, you're a father, and you're everything in between, you can do something for the Lord. Amen. Today, I could be a better son, better daughter, Thank God that God has given me the opportunity to be a better husband, better wife. Thank God that God has given me the opportunity to be a better friend, better co-worker, better something. You can have that when you have lowliness of mind. When you realize that I don't deserve any of this, and I'm grateful for every single day, it's like this. Someone had a terminal cancer. I think one of the worst cancers I always hear is pancreatic cancer. They heard, they met the doctor, and it's a silent killer. A lot of times you find out at the terminal stage, and the doctor has given you the cream news. You know, sorry, you have about three months to live, right? But suddenly you have a, it's gone. I mean, you have new life. Yeah. That type of person, I guarantee you, will have a loneliness of mind yeah. each day, as in, thank God for another day. Amen. Thank God for another day. Man, you and I were sinners on our way to hell. Yes. But Christ gave us new life. Thank you, and Lord. that's new every day. Yes. And that's something where we can do as a members of the body of Christ, something for the Lord every day. Amen. Again, it doesn't have to be at the church because I don't see you on Monday and Tuesday, right? I don't see you Thursday, right? Then you're somewhere else. You're at home, you're at work, wherever. But you still are body of Christ, in body of Christ, and you're doing something. Then do it with the lowliness of mind. Just thank God for that opportunity. Be grateful, right? Don't take it for granted. What's the common thing? What's going to be the result, conclusion? If we take anything for granted, we're going to lose it. Simple as that. You take your good health for granted, you're going to lose it. If you take your eyesight for granted, you're going to lose it. I mean, if you take hearing for granted, you're going to lose it. If you take, you know, you're walking for granted, you can't walk. 
breathe, everything. You can't take anything for granted as a saved Christian. Everything, you have to be grateful. And how does that come about when you have lowliness of mind? Like, I'm nothing, I don't deserve anything, and the Lord has given me anything. Continuing, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other. Man, this is going to be tough. You tell me, it's tough. You know, say, everybody thinks you're the best part of the body, right? You know, and then whatever it is for you, best part of the body, it says your eyes, right? You know, because it, without me, you know, we can't go anywhere. You know, we can't see anything. So you look down, you know, you look down on your, you know, uh, what's, what's neglected parts of the body, right? I don't know, you look down on your skin or something, right? Okay. You know, without me, you can't go anywhere, you know? And then you start looking down at other members of the body. Then what's going to happen? You're going to get sick, and you're going to realize, I really need that body, you know, right? And I really need that body part to work, right? And how do you not get to that point? You have to esteem each other better than themselves. I mean, if you take care of each body like better than every part of the body, then you're gonna take each members of the body to your best. Okay. Okay. Your right hand is saying, you know what? Left hand, you you deserve the best. And right hand's left hand's telling right hand, you deserve the best. You know. And then you're helping each other. And then each part of the body, the members of the body of the Christ, is considered and treated very, very, you know, in a right matter, in a precious matter. Verse 4, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Then selfishness goes away, right? Yes. Like I mentioned, you know, just... You know, example. If your body says no to junk food because it's going to hurt other parts of the body, then looking at the verse 4, look not every man on his own things. You know what? I can't be selfish. Other members of the body will not benefit from this. So you're not going to do it. Yeah. Or you have to eat healthy, right? Amen. You've got to eat some salaries now, okay? Broccoli. You know what? Other parts of the body needs it. Yes. So I'm not going to look at on my own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's why where this is where you know, Apostle Paul, I mean, he avoided meat because he would offend some other brothers. Your own selfishness could be a stumbling block to other brethren. Yes. Just remember that. If you do not look after things of other. Brethren, they're, they're the members of the body of Christ, then what's going to happen? You're going to offend them, and you're going to lose it. You could lose them as well, and you could be that culprit, right? If doctor told you you have to eat this medicine so that you won't lose you know, your eyesight, but you, you neglect that medicine, you know, your hand goes, you know, I don't want to touch it. You know, I don't want to touch it. Your mouth goes, you know what, I don't want to eat it. No, I don't want to eat it. Then suddenly, you lose your eyesight because you're only thinking about your own things. Then what happens to the body? It loses the sight. Then how can that body operate properly? How can that body go anywhere? How can that body see the you know, wonderful creations of God you know, people actually getting saved, right? You know, all this great stuff. Why? Because you and I, as a selfish people, just looking at our own things and not of the others. So when you see the brethren at church, when you see Christians outside of church, think about how you view them. Think about how you Treat them. Think about where your attitude is. Why? Because ultimately, look at verse 5. 
let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You always say, I always say, I want to have mind of Jesus Christ. Look at here, right? Look at verse 6. Who in being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God? I mean, he is God. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Think about it. You're an almighty God. And you have humbled yourself to become a lowly human being so that lowly human beings can get saved from hell. Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. God Almighty humbled himself. Bless the Lord. I mean, shouldn't you and I humble ourselves all the time? I mean, you and I are nothing, right. honestly. Amen. You know, and we always look down on people. Yeah. We only look for our own benefits. Yeah. We're yeah. always a stumbling block to other brethren. Why? Because we don't have mind of Christ in us. That's right. You don't know that you're body of Christ many times. That's why you and I need to humble ourselves and become obedient unto death. Think about the Lord Jesus Christ, God himself was obedient to death. When was the last time you were obedient to death? I mean, literally. You know, I mentioned it before. When you're obeying Christ, when you're doing something for Christ, was it a life of, I mean, was it a matter of life or death, right? Even if you were to die, you were going to follow Christ and obey Christ. Even if you were going to lose your life, you're going to do it, Amen. right? Yes. Even if I'm going to die, I'm going to do my best as a member of body of Christ. Amen. Whatever that role is, right? Then you have to have that kind of mind, continuing even the death of the cross. So, brethren, think about it. Think about it. You and I are body of Christ. In the body of Christ, we each have a particular role as a member of body of Christ inside the ministry, at home, everywhere else. Yes. Amen. We don't have same job. Don't be jealous and envious of others. Be thankful for what you are. Amen. Sinners saved by grace. Amen. And you have opportunity to do something for the Lord yes. as a members of the body of Christ each day. And don't neglect it. If you neglected it, then get right. You know, yeah. get right with the Lord. Lord, I, you know, I always die. You know, I, I was only a, you know, fingernail. You know, but you know, I know every part is precious. Every body, you know, members of the body is precious. Help me not to neglect it. Help me not to be selfish, proud, stubborn, lazy. Yes. But help me to just really, with the lowliness of mind, you know, esteem others better than me. Like how you are obedient to death. Help me to be obedient even to death as a body. As a members of the body in Christ, then, then you could truly understand the mind of Christ. Let's pray.